Hi, good evening. It's, um, gosh, it's about nine o'clock. Well, it's about 845 on the East Coast. And I'm going to try to start this little dry brush project with my little snow people. Detail on them's a little worn out, but we're going to see if we can get the look that we're trying to get. I'm hoping to um, dry brush these ceramic pieces and make them look like little carved wood pieces. Um, I have two other dry brushing videos uh, currently on YouTube under the account of Time to Be Creative. I have two YouTube accounts. It's a very boring story. So I won't go there, but I'm trying to move everything over to this account, which is my pink girly account. And um, so I hope anyone interested can find me here. I'm trying to increase my subscriber list. And so if you would like to check out those other two videos, they're called Dry Brushing with Acrylic Paint Part 1 and Part 2. This one I'm calling dry brushing snow people, dry brushing, I think, um, I think I said dry brushing ceramic snow people. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat these black. And so what you want to do um, in that case, I know it might sound a little scary to base coat a piece black. But it would really, it'll really be okay. But if you're uncomfortable with that, you can base coat them in something lighter. Um, years ago, we used to, um, I think, use like an antiquing solution on them. But I base coated them in other colors. Like if I was doing an Easter rabbit, depending on the piece, I may not do it in black. I may do it uh, in a light gray or I may do it in a tan. Now, this is a work mat. I can clean this up very easily. So I'm not dumping paint right on my on my table. So I'm just using a regular brown soft haired brush. I put this in water, um, took off the excess water. And uh, I'm just going to base coat and get in all these little crevices. I should have done one ahead of time off camera, but I just figured I could use this time to chat while I'm base coating. And what you basically want to do is you're just using your paint full strength. Um, you don't want any streaks, especially around the face area. You want to brush it out very well and you want to make sure you get in all the little nooks and crannies if it freaks you out to paint your piece black you could go with a charcoal you certainly could go with um, gray a lighter gray you could go with a tan or a flesh kind of color you really could go with any color um, just keep in mind that when you dry brush it, especially over the textured areas of your piece, whatever you have it base coated underneath, that's what's going to provide you with a contrast. So if you're wanting um, a really strong contrast with what you're working on, the piece you're working on, then the darker the color, the greater the contrast. So black is not as scary as you might think. But you have to do what you're comfortable with. So I really wanted my colors to pop on this. Now if I have had a few folks um, encourage me to do a few more ceramic videos and so I'd like to give a shout out to Christina and Jane and I did buy a few other pieces as well to work on I thought I'd start with the easier ones first 
And I was thinking my grandchildren would like to have these. Of course, not to play with, but maybe to decorate their room or help decorate the house. When winter time comes. So I know I'm rushing the season a little bit, but I have a hard time pick, picking out some pieces to work on. I'm out of the uh, ceramic loop. And I don't know what's popular as far as um, what kind of pieces folks like to work on these days. I had my husband drop into one of those. Um, I think it's a chain, a, a ceramic, some kind of a ceramic um, chain. They're in the malls. I guess some of them are freestanding buildings uh, where you can go in and you purchase uh, a piece to, uh, to paint and you sit down right there and you paint. I guess kids go there for parties and whatnot but we found the he found the pieces to be really quite expensive excuse me I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee so that's when I took a, a ride out to um, this place in Riverside New Jersey called mushrooms studio I'd been there once before and um, I mean, they have quite a large selection. But I forgot how dusty a ceramic studio can be. And I wore a black t-shirt. I was a mess when I came out. So they have a deal every Saturday where they offer a 50% discount. Just depends on what the theme might be for that Saturday. I'll give them a shout out. So I went last Saturday and the theme was 50% off of any bisque piece that had eyes. So I saw a couple other things I might like to track, like to tackle and do a video on. But I'll have to go back in September and get those because in September, all their bisque pieces are 50% off just on Saturday. So I'll have to plan another trip. So I got these two little fellas and I think I have three other projects. So that'll, that'll do me for a little bit. And um, now I just put the little girl snow person aside so the top of her can dry while I paint on the base coat of the boy snow person. And um, I don't want to get black paint all over my fingers. Of course, it won't be the, wouldn't be the first time. So I'm thinking um, normally what I would do in my other videos on my other channel, if you've watched them at all, you know I haven't done this for quite a little while. So normally what I would have done years ago is, um, and I think I'll do the same now, I'm going to start with my lighter colors first. So I'll determine what um, area of the snowman, snow gal, I want uh, lightened up. And of course that would be their faces. Looks like they're wearing gloves and maybe around the bottom it looks like that would be snow. He's got a little scene, like he's wearing a sweater. He's got a tree and, oh, there's a little snow, snowman on his sh See, now I don't know if you can see this, but see how the bisque is dr drinking in some of that paint and then it's leaving these little white spots. You want to make sure you really um, scrub into that 
enough paint to cover that. You don't want any little white spots. They'll haunt you, believe me. They will haunt you. <clears throat> so... I mean, this brush that I'm using is probably going to be trash by the time I'm done scrubbing in this paint. So if you're going to do this to a piece of your ceramic, use one of your older brushes. Don't, don't use a good brush to do your base coating. And then as that dries and that kind of soaks in, you might have to go back and hit it again in a couple of places i should probably hold this up so you can see better but i'm just base i'm just base uh base coating this with the flat black paint So you can see, I don't know if you can really see, there's little tiny white spots. I really thought I had gotten this very, covered this very well. So the first thing I'm going to do when I get this base coated, and uh, the paint dries pretty quickly, if um, you're familiar with acrylic paint, it dries very quickly. So once I get this base coated and I'm happy with it, um, I'm going to start dry brushing my lighter areas. And the idea of the dry brush is that you use your brush dry. And then you can work from color to color. And uh, you, you want to start with your lighter colors first because then as that paint builds and you rub the paint through your brush, you can switch from color to color. But it's harder to switch from a darker color than to a light color. So you don't want to do like your, you know, a red hat and then do a white face. So you kind of need to think ahead a little bit as far as uh, your coloring goes. Now, if you have a ton of brushes, you don't have to be um, that cautious. For a couple of hours and maybe try to get a project finished i have to be aware of what colors i'm going to do first and, and how i'm going to work them through my brush so i can keep going just a little tip now she looks pretty good and i remember years ago doing pieces and then when you would dry brush them they they kind of look like carved wood. And these little pieces, maybe you can see it there. That looks like that might have been like a whittled piece or a carved piece. And um, she's got a little, a little scene on her sweater too. They had some really cute um, dragons and dinosaur type of pieces at the ceramic shop. I had my eye on a couple of those. We'll see. And if you get too bored watching me base coat and you're watching this recorded uploaded version just fast forward till we get to the good stuff. But maybe sometimes someone's watching that has never done this before and they find this very interesting. Eh. Okay. That might be good enough to get us to where we can start. Of course, you can always go back and touch in these little spots with a smaller brush, but I get over anxious to get busy and get started. Now, it looks like she's got little curls in her hair. It'll be really hard for you to see right up in here. 
little curls of hair and our little face. And down here, we're going to do snow. And of course, this little snowman on our sweater. And I think we'll assume she's wearing mittens. And this little um, pom pom on the top of her head. We'll want to do that in a lighter color. We, I was able to pick up a few new dry brushes, so uh, and they're smaller. And um, where I got the the two pieces, they had a few brushes. They really didn't have too much of a selection, but I got this Duncan Number no. Four bristle brush. I don't know if they call them a china brush, or that's just telling me it was made in China. At dry brushing, you want to use your brush dry. You want to use a bristle brush versus a soft hair brush, but yet a brush that has some flexibility. And you want to uh, rub your brush once you load the paint on it off um, onto a paper towel or a piece of paper bag, something like that. I'll clean up my black paint here. And you want to use light layers of paint. You can add paint. You can't take paint off. Of course, you can rebase coat your, your piece. But that would get old quick. And so um, you don't want to go from, from a dark color, from your base coat color, right up to white. You want to gradually uh, layer up to the color white you want. So normally I start with some kind of a flesh tone. And then I might go to an ivory and then a white, or I might go um, a tan, a flesh tone, ivory, white, and then say a snow white. So I don't have any paints picked out. And I'm just looking to see what I have here. I have this toffee color. This is an Americana paint. You can see I've had this a while. My label's all cracked. Toffee. And it's probably not mixed very well. It's probably lumpy and bumpy, which really doesn't matter too much because I'm going to rub it through my brush. So I think I'm going to start with this toffee color and I'm just going to put out a little bit I can always put out a little bit more if I want and I'm going to use this number four brush and I'm just going to tip it in my paint just a little bit on the tip and then I'm going to rub it out on my paper towel because you're not sure how um, especially if you're new to this technique and you're not sure how it's gonna go for you, start in the back. And I'm just gonna use light strokes back and forth, like a swishing kind of a motion. I'm not gonna mash down on the piece, just real light. I'm just skimming the surface. I want the darkness to stay, and I'm just trying to catch the top part of the piece and highlight that. And then once you start painting that, and you'll start to see that your brush runs out of paint, then you're going to reload. I have a big old hair there stuck to the bottom of her foot. And then do more layers now it doesn't dry immediately but it doesn't you're putting on a light light thin film of paint and you can see here where I missed well maybe white there where I didn't get the black so now I'm going to reapply this tan or uh, I guess it wasn't tan toffee and I'm just going to add my next layer Real light strokes. 
just trying to catch the top. Now her face is fairly smooth. And this little snow guy, he's fairly smooth. Of course. Mostly picking up uh, his nose. And my, this brush is really kind of too big for this small area. But I'm just pinching that with my fingers. But if you have a smaller brush, you, you want to use a small brush in that area. Your projects will go a lot. I do have this number, whew, number two. Same thing. I'm just going to put a little paint on it. I'll paint on it. Ooh, trying to get in the camera right. And then I'm going to rub most of that off. <clears throat> you find with any project, if you use the right tool for the job, the project goes a lot easier. So you want to use a smaller brush for small areas. That looks like a Christmas. Oh, geez, I'm out of frame. All right. I'm going to try this little bigger brush, a little bigger, <laughs> on her face. The face is a little more fiddly because, like I said, there's no... Um, There's no texture, it's just a smooth surface. And everything else around that is so, so black, it looks so stark. And I keep putting that towards me instead of towards you. And then we're gonna get that little pom-pom on our hat. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the boy snowman. And then I'm, I'm just thinking, um, I haven't really thought color wise. Um, I might like to do the fence and have that be real white, white. I might paint sure about that yet. And her scarf, I'll probably make a color. The inside of her hood. I think I want to do around her hood a lighter color. So I'm going to Use those light strokes, just swish it back and forth. Do the edge. I'll probably paint inside of her hood. I want to get a little closer to the edge of our little hood. And that looks pretty good for a first coat. Now him, you can see a little more of his face and he's got more texture. But the same thing, we're going to put a little bit of paint on our brush, rub out most of the paint. We're going to start in the back here on this little bumble ball or his little pom-pom on the top of his head, top of his hat. And I flip things all around, even when I'm trying to draw or color. I'm a flipper. I like to flip my pieces around. I'm also going to give him a lighter uh, trim around his hat.
you know, if you're cleaning your own greenware, you probably would do a better job. But this, like this, um, whoever cleaned it, sanded off all the details. See, I would score that back in. So there's not much detail right there where that, where the mold goes together and that seam. And this is the, let's see, I guess that's the back of, this is the back of his, oops, sorry, darling. This is the back of his head. So I'm going to put some of that light toffee color there. And then I'm going to start on his face. And I'm not too worried about his nose because I'm going to do that orange and I probably will paint that on. So it really kind of stands out a little bit. So I'm just, oh my goodness, I'm not even in frame. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to. I get so engrossed in what I'm doing, and I'm not paying attention to the screen. And just remember, it's um, a process, and it's thin layers. And it looks very scary right now. But it will look better. So around his coat. You want to do his little sleeves. Go right up in there. I'm going to make him have gloves. It looks like he does have gloves. It's There's no texture there like his face. It's just a little different. Now, this is um, a scene on his sweater, and it looks like a little snow mounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this light color on there. And then this is the trim around his jacket, and then right down to his bottom. keep forgetting to check to make sure I'm in in frame my lighting is terrible I really have to do something about my lighting there's a little tiny black dot I mean little tiny white dot there that I that I missed so I'm going to come in with a little tiny brush and paint that black. There's a couple little things. Some of it might be flakes that are being spat out by the dry brush. So I just wanna get that. And I keep running my paper towel into my paint computer screen everything's backwards I know it, it's it's okay for you but for me it's you look up and you think what okay now some of these areas I'm going to want really white white and the other ones I'm I am not going to want them as white because I want there to be some differentiation <clears throat> that's a $2 word uh, on the piece so it's not boring so it's not all one one shade of white and yes there are different shades of white so really I mean if you wanted to say make your snow people look a little um, like a blue white you could put a little light blue in there uh, another layer of white or say um the fur around there like say for her if she's going to be wearing purple i might put a little purple or pink in her fur here or there to kind of just jazz it up now he's got 
also has got a snowman on his sweater or coat. So I'm going to come back with that little tinier number two brush loaded again with the toffee. And this guy's really little. Can you see him there? He's a little teeny snowman. And you don't have to dry brush everything. You could really paint some of this. That little guy is really hard to get. All right, so I wanna make sure I've gotten all the areas that I want with this first layer of this color toffee. And I didn't do her sleeves. So I'm gonna come back in and do her sleeves. Now, because I'm doing these for my grandchildren, my granddaughter is four, my grandson is one. So he really doesn't have an opinion yet, but my granddaughter certainly does. And she likes blue. So I am going to do her in blues. And I don't know what I'll do him in. I want to do him in something that will go with the blue. I think last year they decorated their house for Christmas, mostly in blue and silvers. Now, it looks like uh, this snowman as well is sitting on a little mound of snow. So I'm going to give that. I'm not too sure this is looking like carved wood, but it will be cute for sure. These are cute pieces. I don't even know who they're by because they don't, they don't have any kind of marking on the bottom. All right, now you can um, do a couple layers of this toffee. And uh, you could have more of a toffee look. But I think I'm going to, for the purposes of the video, I'm going to move up to the next, to an, a lighter color. which I'm not sure this bamboo might work. So sometimes I just like to compare. I don't know if you can see, you can see that that bamboo is a little lighter. This is uh, looks a little more yellowy. This looks a little cooler. So I'm gonna use a little of this bamboo to be my next layer of color and I'm going to use the same brush I'm not going to rinse it off I'm going to use it just as it is but I'm going to work the new color I think I might have put the wrong lid on I'm going to work that new color into the brush so I'm going to do it the same way just put a little bit on the tip of the brush and then I'm going to rub most of it off on the paper towel and I'm going to continue to do that until I get that color lightened up to the way I want it. Until it starts to look more like that bamboo color. And I'm going to try it again on the back. And I'm going to just start to brighten that up. and build the layers of color. Now, sometimes you get a little heavy handed. I'm going to go over all these areas where I originally put that toffee.
Okay, I'm going to switch to my smaller brush again. Add a little bit of that new color, that bamboo. I'm working that through my brush. And I'm going to work on that little guy. Really lighten him up. kind of looking like a remember to work with the size brush that you're comfortable with and that's appropriate for your piece I mean if you're working on a great big snowman or a Christmas tree or pumpkin you're not going to use this little tiny thing you want to get a big honking brush And you're continuing with the light strokes. I don't know why. I just, I, I kind of like to work with things upside down. I know sometimes when you're trying to see if you made any mistakes or you missed something, even in, in proofreading, like you read backwards, you know, you go from left to right. No, right to left instead of left to right and sometimes lots of times those mistakes or missing words will pop out at you i feel like it's the same way when you're painting you pop it upside down I thought I'd do this video while I was waiting for my ball team to come on. They're uh, well, I'm playing on the West Coast, and the game doesn't start East Coast time until almost 10 o'clock. This tonight, but this will give us a good start. And it seems that once you get your first layer on, uh, the other layers seem to go a little quicker. Now I'm going to come back and do the same for her. I might um, think about her fur area, or really both of them, not to be as bright white. I'm just looking at my other colors and seeing what I might like to, um, if I'm going to make her blue, maybe a green. Maybe I'll do that. Um, I might put a little gray on the fur area, the trim area of their outfits. And because I'm basically just working with these two brushes, because they're working pretty nice for me, they're, they have nice um, flexibility to them. I might um, do that next. On her face. And then I want to get the snowman. Half of the battle is remembering what spots you've hit and what spots you need to go back to a little I think there's a little hair or a little bristle stuck in that paint there that was just a plain brush no paint on it that I brushed off that little all right so 
Let's see. If you could see my work area. You would be amazed. I think I want to do uh, maybe a slate, this slate gray. It's very light. This is a Amer Americana color, slate gray, G-R-E-Y. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of this. That's way too much paint, probably. On their fur. And then if I want to come back on top of that with some white, it will still look brighter and lighter, but the tone and all would be would be different than the snow part. So I'm just going to add this to the trim area. And I'm just really putting on a very light coat. To the coat and then I'm gonna do her sleeves and around her hood But you're still able to see that dark, the dark creases in there that the black provides us. And then the little pom pom. Okay. And then we're going to do the same with him. Just on the trim of his outfit. I mean, the paper towel is fine, but if you if you have um, a paper bag, I tend to like the paper bag better. I don't know that we have any paper bags anymore. So I just grabbed the paper towel, it was easier, and right here. But if you can use um, a paper bag, I think that might be better. I think my dogs are getting restless. Puppy's already in bed. He goes to work early. And I think they're getting lonely. I don't want to forget his pom pom. So now I'm going to go into, um, I have an ivory color. used to have an ivory color. Uh, I don't think I want that. Well, I guess I don't have it anymore. Oh yeah, ivory white. Okay, looked a little whiter than I thought it should look. This is a folk art color. Ivory white, number 427. So we're going to take a little bit of that, and then I'm going to work that in my brush. It might be that the thunderstorms have started, and my dogs really do not like storms. Well, we've been here about 45 minutes, so I'll go about an hour. Let's see what we get done. And then I can continue this. And what I might do is finish one and then finish the other one um, on the video.
So now I'm, I'm switching from gray to ivory white. So I really um, want that to be most of that gray out of my brush. So I'm just adding the ivory white and I'm just rubbing it on my paper towel till I get more of an ivory white color. All right. So I'll put a little more paint out here because I didn't really want that gray gray. And now I'm going to put this on the snow person, the little snow body and the face and really uh, try to brighten that up so you can differentiate that from the. I might just hit this in spots. And you have to do um, with whatever piece you're working on, what your eye finds attractive and what you like. And remember, the paint does dry fairly quickly, but it's it's still, once you put it on there, it's still um, going to have a little bit of tackiness or wetness to it. So you don't want to really stick your finger in there and get a fingerprint. Now, this here where this little snow mound is, you see that little crest and that little ridge? You don't want to get anything down in that crack. You just want to just want to tip the top of that little crest that little hill to draw attention to that and make that kind of pop and then I'll come back in there with white white and give that another layer to really kind of help that pop and I'll be going over his face like his eyes with black I'll paint that in My time is about done. They're scratching at the door. The natives are restless. And then I don't want to forget the back of his head here. hear a little bit of thunder okay I didn't do the little snow guy so hers is almost like little feet here she's got a little indentation they are like little snow feet and then her little snow bank is a little different than the other one just put a few little highlights. If you'd like, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm pink girly there as well. I do a lot of different um, art things. Mixed media, coloring. Now ceramics. And I want to do her face. I enjoy showing people what I have learned and what I enjoy doing. So her face is brightening up pretty, pretty quickly. And I'm going to do these little guys. It 
These little guys are a struggle. Her nose is really weird because it's kind of like a fat round dot. It's not really like a carrot. It's like a Barney Rubble nose or something. I think I did that. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of bright white. This is an Americana color. Oh, I keep picking up my this Americana one that's uh, I have so many jars of paint, the bottles of paint open, and then I take them places, and then I forget where, because I use them in my color books, too. This is um, Americana by Deco Art, and this is Snow White, or Titanium White. And I don't want to pick that off. I don't have any fingernails. And they put that little plastic sealer around it. And I never can get it off. So now this isn't going to be as much of a stretch because we have the ivory white. And gosh, you really can't tell a whole lot of difference between the two. But you should be able to tell on your piece. And I really wanted to get this... Um, little snowbank. So that pops. And then just make sure you go into the right puddle of paint so that you're not putting your dark color back down. I've done that plenty of times. And then you can put as many layers on as you want to make him look as bright white or not so much. Um, well, you're not, you know, you're not going to be doing this exact piece, but whatever piece you're working on, say if you were working on a gnome or a, a frog, you know, you may not want that to be a real bright green or whatever. So you just layer up as, as much as you want for the way you want your piece to look. Okay, we're just about at an hour. And I want to um, maybe put some color on it on their cheeks. And then uh, the next video, because I don't want to drag this out too long. I'll do... Um, I'll have, I'll have one finished. And then I'll do the outfit on the other. So now I will pick out some kind of mauve color or pink something. Or you could do a peach. Um, when I think of snow people out in the snow, I think of rosy cheeks. I'm going to use this smaller brush. I'm just going to put some of this brighter white on her as well. And uh, same technique, I'm going to hit it very lightly with my brush. Just going to brighten up the snowbank a little bit. Her little pom pom, I want a little brighter. And then I don't think I did her face. So we'll make her face even a little brighter. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to do with her nose because it's almost like maybe her nose is like a lump of coal. But then if I make it black. She might look like she's got a, a big hole in her face. So that's, that could be a dilemma. All right, so let me pick out uh, antique mauve. Or some, some people say mauve, say mauve. Just need the little teeniest bit. 
Uh, maybe you might need more than that. I'm going to use my smaller brush. Again, I'm just putting a little bit on here. I want to start out with a light layer. So hopefully I can get it on smooth and not blotchy. And I'm just going to go in the cheek area. Bring you a circular motion. You may not want um, bright rosy cheeks. So then you would just skip this part if you're doing a snow person or a, if you're doing a little duck or a little girl or um, gosh, even a dragon. It gives some color to their face. I don't know if you can see that. It's really a lot darker in person than it looks on the computer screen. I'll wait to see how the video looks. Let me just get to my black here. And I really would encourage you not to do this. Use your paint from your jar, your, your paint lid. It's really not a good habit. And these are just like little black spots like coal. But his nose is more like a cone, like a carrot. An episode with my contact lens this morning, so I'm not wearing my contact lenses. So I'm not seeing as well as I really should be for those little eyeballs. Ah. I just gave him a sty in his eye. I think I jinxed myself. Those little impressions for the eyes are right there. So you really don't have to uh, have any special talent. I'm going to put some, what's this one called? Red clay. This is a folk art color on the nose. And then I might come back and dry brush that with a brighter green. Or like I have um, some of those... Uh, like neo, not neo, um, yeah, like neon kind of colors. All right, so I'm just painting his carrot nose. Sometimes that, oh goodness me, sometimes that takes a couple of coats. But he looks better already. And when you get some color, we get some, I get some color dry brushed around his um, face. That's really going to, that'll really pop. And then I'll put a little highlight in his eye. I should probably do that so he doesn't look like he's staring into space. If I can find a small enough stylus. I had all kinds of stuff out earlier working with my neighbor. This one's real tiny. I'm just going to put a little highlight. I don't know if you can see it. All right, so I'm going to say good night. I'll work on these off camera. I'll finish one. Maybe I'll finish him because I have his face done. And then um, I'll finish her up on the next video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you join me for this part two of the Ceramic Snow People. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up. Thanks so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.